don't blame me. Shaitan is going to talk on the day of judgment. He's going to look at you and me. He says, don't blame me. Blame yourself. ما كان لي عليكم من سلطان. I had no power over you. You are a part of the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My brothers and my sisters, every one of you is valuable. Every one of you is important. Don't get caught up in the fact that we're large in number. It's not quantity that Allah is looking for. It's quality. It's quality. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, O Sahaba, after you will come the days of patience, the days of difficulty, the days where it is hard to be a Muslim and righteous. But whoever in those days of difficulties and in those days of vice and in those days of the internet, if in those days whoever holds on to what you have held on to, if they hold on to the deen as you are holding, O Sahaba, لهم أجر خمسين they will get the reward of fifty. So they said, يا رسول الله خمسين منا أم منهم the reward of fifty of us or fifty of them. So the Rasul said, بل منكم no fifty of you, my Sahaba. Allah has destined goodness for you. Be patient. Ride the waves. You will have hardship, difficulty. إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرًا Indeed, with hardship there is ease, and with the same hardship there is another point of ease. You will always have ease. Look at the positives. Do you not have faith in Allah? That should keep you focused. The more hardships you go through, and the more patient you are, the more it is a sign that Allah loves you. When you call out to Allah, Allah has heard your dua. This is Allah. Ask Him. Don't be shy. Don't. Don't stop, don't hold back, ask him anything and everything. When you leave things for the sake of Allah, you understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will move mountains for you. The way you live is the way you're gonna die. And the angel of death was given a job for a reason. Trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the right door for you at the right time. A Muslim should not believe in something called impossible. Everything is possible with a dua. When one beat of your heart is out of sync, everything comes to an end. Subhanallah. One beat is out of sync. You're rushing from pillar to post, hospital to here, cardiologist to another. Everything's happening. Why? One beat went out of place. But you and I didn't even think of that for these 50 years that we've been alive. We didn't remember Allah because nothing went wrong. So Allah says, when I love you, I'm going to let some things go wrong so that you can come to me. Allah. Go and search the world. I challenge anyone. You will never find ultimate peace and happiness except with Allah. This world cannot give you peace and happiness. Allah alone can give you peace and happiness. We've been fooled. We've been, as the expression goes, we've been duped, as the Americans say. Today we think peace and happiness comes through money and cars, women and men, homes and positions and status. Every dua is heard by Allah. Every single dua is heard by Allah. It's a matter of time for that dua to come and plug in. Some people it's a few days, some people it's months, some people it's years. Don't ever think that Allah did not accept you. Ever. All of us, if you sit and think about some du'as you've made in your life that happened five years later, it happened ten years later, you don't realize it came, it definitely came when the time was right. That's Allah's plan. Trust Allah. My brothers and my sisters, after every sin, we need to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just saying Astaghfirullah, it has so many benefits, so many. It increases your provision, it gives you strength. This is not the lecture for that. Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Keeping your tongue moist, my brothers and my sisters. 
even if you fall back into the addiction a thousand times. That's what Imam al Nawi said. You take a thousand steps away from Allah, just one step to come back to Allah Azza wa Jal. How many messages do I receive on my fitnagram, right? Of brothers and sisters always saying, I've gone too deep. There's no way out for me. I'm doomed. No, you're not. If you turn to Allah, trust me, you develop such a beautiful relationship with your maker. You know that he knows you better than anyone else. Allah knows you personally. Allah knows you better than you know yourself. Allah knows what you have done and he has forgiven you. Allah knows where you are standing and what's bubbling in your heart right now. And he understands it. Allah knows the challenges you are facing. Allah knows how difficult life is. Allah knows what is going on, the challenges, whatever you may face, Allah knows everything. And he is letting it be in order for you to earn a reward by being patient, thanking him, turning to him, getting closer to him. So sometimes Allah doesn't give us something. Relax, take it easy, take it in your stride. Perhaps Allah knows that your future with this particular person is not going to be as rosy as you think. So learn to let it go. I tell my children, do not get attached to anything you found on earth to the degree that when it's taken away by Allah, you become depressed. No matter who and what. If your attachment is to Allah, you won't be let down. When your attachment is to something you found on earth, you may have a problem. We're all attached, but to what level? To a level that if it were to be taken away from you, at least you know, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un and Allah will help you to continue and to grow and to go. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, What is the life of this world but like a person who dips his finger into an ocean? Let him then raise his finger and see what he brings back. Subhanallah. Yeah, so that damp that you have on your finger, those two or three droplets after you've raised your finger from the sea, this is the dunya. Those are my and your career aspirations and those are our savings and those are our investments. And that's the men and women all within that bit of water. And those towers in your Americas and your, your East and your West, it's all there. And as for the ocean, that is the Akhirah. La ilaha illallah. That is the Akhirah. And so it's an evil trade-off for someone who prefers the drops over the ocean. Sometimes you want something so desperately and Allah says, we know it's harmful for you long term. We're not going to give it to you. You become so upset and so cross, so angry, so angry. Don't be. If Allah closed the door, it's closed. Allah's protecting you. Surrender to the decree of Allah. Allah doesn't want it. You don't know the future, my beloved sister, my brother. You don't know the future. Allah knows it. So the Prophet Muhammad says, People will continue to remain upon goodness and earn the mercy of Allah for as long as they don't commit open sin and they're not proud about their sins. You committed a sin. The first thing you need to do, admit it's a sin. Allahu Akbar. Admit this is sinful. And then keep it hidden. Respect yourself. Keep it hidden. Then turn to Allah. Ask Allah, Oh Allah, I regret what I did. I shouldn't have done this. I seek your forgiveness. I won't do it again. Once you say that sincerely, Wallahi, it is wiped out. Now, Shaitan comes and makes you say, it can't have been that easy. You're not forgiven. You can't just be forgiven like that. Allah says, don't doubt my mercy. Do not doubt my mercy. You're a believer. You sought forgiveness. It's forgiven. But now improve yourself. Stop looking at the brothers and sisters and comparing your life to them. Because no one could live your life better than yourself. You are the main character of your own life. And the more you chase this dunya, the more your heart is going to get darkened. The more you please anything and everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your heart is going to get darkened. Mu'min should, the minimum is they should feel in their hearts, you know what, this is wrong. Because you don't want to normalize that sin. If you cannot feel in your heart that the sin is a sin, then you've normalized it. And if you've normalized it, what's going to happen to the coming generations? They will all encourage each other to engage in it. Astaghfirullah. Allah created human beings in difficulty. 
and he created human beings in heavy burden. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ We certainly created the human being buried under heavy loads, exhaustive labor. Emotionally you're struggling, physically you're taxed, you're struggling, health-wise you may be struggling, financially you may be struggling, because of people you may be struggling. This life, Allah designed it to be difficult. Sometimes you look at other people and you say, they have it so much easier than I do. But you don't know what other difficulties Allah gave them that are invisible from you. Everyone has difficulties. Everyone has challenges. It is hard. It is difficult. It's normal to feel sad. It's normal to cry. It's okay. You can cry. But you are not crying because you're questioning Allah. You're crying because you're just a human being. Because everything that happens to a believer is only good for him. If something positive happens, he does shukr. He thanks Allah. It's good. Something negative happens, he bears patience, it's good. The reward for sabr is great. Did you do sabr yet? Don't stress. If today is wrong, tomorrow will be right. And if today is right, something might go wrong according to you tomorrow. According to Allah, it did not go wrong. It was his plan for you and for me.